What's going on folks and welcome back to Stu's Garage. Uh, today we're going to be doing something that I know you guys have been waiting for for a pretty long time. Uh, today we're going to be actually revealing the motor that's going inside the Drift Fox right back there. But before I do that I want to talk about some of the options that I considered or some of the things that you guys suggested and why I did or didn't go that route. So first of all, um, one motor that everybody likes is the Jay-Z series of motors. Me personally, I can't stand them. Um, I know they're pretty dominant in the drift scene and um, you know aside from the LS motors uh, but me as a native fan of drag racing uh, they don't even make it down the track I've seen so many Jay-Z motors blow their guts out all over the track and it takes a half hour for track cleanup I'm sick of them and I don't want to see them uh, that's just me personally I don't like them uh, next up of course the LS motors it's been done a million times whatever uh, next up Ford motors there's your whole modular motor family which is the 4.6 the 5.4 the 5.8 I think um, the Cobra motor the Terminator motor I'd love to put a Terminator motor in this car but honestly price check one for yourself look at it um, the 4.6 modular family of motors they just don't meet the bang for your buck that you get out of a 5.0 two valve motor uh, they just they just don't measure up so um, honestly as far as Ford Motors goes you're really not going to do much better than a 5.0 and especially after this last event that I went to uh, and how this motor performed it's really difficult for me to yank this thing out of the car because it's rock solid um, it's a great motor uh, I just can't say enough good things. It's the, probably the most reliable motor that I've ever had. So, thumbs up for the 5.0 for the 302 uh, and anything related to that. Um, I did look for a 351. They are a little bit difficult to find and I don't know, I just kind of didn't want to go that route. But a 351 would have been a pretty cool option for this. Um, but also, like I said before, I wanted something that was lighter weight and higher revving. So, the 351, I know I wouldn't have been satisfied with that. Um, next up, the Coyote motor. Uh, folks, that's a $10,000 swap. Uh, I know you guys are used to seeing guys on YouTube uh, who, you know, give away GTRs and I don't know other kind of craziness, uh, smash iPhones and things like that. I don't know how they get their money to do what they do, but on this channel here, everything comes out of my pockets and $10,000 motor swap, it's just not happening, folks. Um, to be honest, so really the, the Coyote swap is, is just not a reasonable price point, uh, especially doing something for a hobby like this. Um, the Coyote swaps are awesome. Uh, I've seen some people do some really awesome things with them, but it's, it's just not in the future for this car. Um, Honestly, I would love to put the GT350 motor in this car, but again, that's a $30,000 motor just by itself. So, um, you know, unlimited money-wise, uh, build-wise, I'm not Kim Block, I'm not Vaughn Gittin. Uh, again, you know, all this stuff is funded right here, straight out of my pockets, and it's just not going to happen. This isn't Forza, folks, you know. You got to earn this, that green stuff, and uh, <laughs> it doesn't grow on trees. So, um, you know, those of you all who are really hoping to see a Coyote swap in this thing, uh, try and price it out for yourself and, and, and just kind of see. Uh, once you buy that motor, the kind of stuff that it takes to put that into a car, it's, uh, it's no walk in the park. As far as other motors go, uh, I would love to have seen an RB25 or 26 in this car, just like the uh, Tokyo Drift car. That would have been really cool, but to me, I couldn't see going through the trouble or and the expense of buying the motor and figuring out how to make it work in the car and then on top of that then you got to modify the motor to make it actually fast and powerful uh, it was just a little bit unreasonable possibly in the future that may be a route that I do go uh, because the motor that I'm putting in here may end up getting used for something else later on maybe I don't know we'll see because the drift fox is never gonna be done uh, but the RB2526, that's a thumbs up in my book. I just, uh, just not this time. Uh, and then, 
other motors I considered, you know, there's the VQ motors. Uh, those are cool, but they, again, they, they just, they don't measure up to what's already in the car. So there's no point. I'm not going backwards. Uh, and then lastly, BMW power, which I love. The Drift Fox was actually born, uh, I'm a BMW guy myself, if you guys hadn't known that already. But the Drift Fox was actually born because modding and messing with BMWs is expensive. It's so expensive and it's difficult and things break and they just tend not to be reliable. So why would I take a very simple car like this and add drama to its life by putting a BMW motor in it for more money that's harder to maintain, harder to mod? It's just not reasonable. This car will probably never ever see BMW power. So what does that leave us with? Uh, I'm looking at it right now and uh, I can already tell you guys uh, you're not going to be happy with what you see, but here goes. Alright folks, so the new motor is revealed and this is a legitimate aluminum block LS motor. Um, as you can see right here, I've got a standalone harness on it already. I'm trying to match some things up, but this is what I've been piecing together for the last couple of months. Since I did actually piece this thing together in conjunction with Joan's performance, I pretty much had time to take every single piece apart, paint everything, put it back together, and I did go a little bit over top with the gold here. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way it's going to look. I'm going to have a cool looking engine bay when it's all said and done. And, um, like I said, this is exactly what I want. Um, so why did I go with the LS? Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm a long time fan of the LS platform motors. Uh, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of them. I love Corvettes. I love Camaros. Um, I do have a Mustang, but honestly, as far as brand loyalty goes, I have none. Uh, I could care less Ford, Chevy, uh, BMW, whatever. I just like things that are cool. Uh, the LS block, since I did go with a legit LS block, uh, this motor right here is actually going to be a hundred pounds less than the 5.0 that's coming out of the car. So this combined with other mods that I've done to the chassis is going to take almost 150 to 200 pounds off of the front end of the car. So there's the lighter aspect. The smaller aspect is because the LS is one of the smallest form factor motors that you can get. Um, so even though I may have misled you a little bit when I said smaller, yeah, the whole physical size of the motor is smaller. And higher revving, I plan on taking this motor up north of 7,000 RPMs. So, uh, the other cool thing about the LS platform motors is literally, uh, this motor right here is going to make some crazy power. I'm not going to tell you guys just yet what I expect to make out of it, and I'm not going to tell you guys the displacement just yet. Uh, I will let you guys know in another video, but that's only for the guys that... Uh, pretty much watch all of my videos. I'm going to throw it in there one day, but I'm not giving up all the secrets, you know, that easy. But um, basically, the thing I like about LS Motors is I built this thing off of all OEM parts, minus the cam, and a couple of other uh, upgrades for durability, like the oil pump, and I'm going to do the valve train later. But this is all built off of parts that people throw away. Uh, and like I said, I've been able to make a pretty sweet motor off of all OEM parts. So that's another plus for the uh, for the LS argument there. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to uh, me and Jones Performance putting this thing together, piecing this together. Uh, shout out to my buddy James Jones. This absolutely wouldn't have happened without you, buddy. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what it took to put this thing together. All right, folks, it's a new day, and uh, James decided to wait for me to put this motor together. So uh, what we're going to be doing is giving it some updates, uh, refreshing a lot of things, and that's pretty much what's making this build affordable is because uh, this is what you would call a junkyard motor. Um, it is a real LS, but I maybe, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. Uh, so what we did yesterday, what I was showing you, is we pulled out the old lifters. Um, we ditched those. Those are over there. So we're going to put new lifters in here. Um, head gaskets, push rods, uh, new oil pumps. So we're basically refreshing everything that, uh, that you would be able to change out on the motor. So by the time this is done, um, only the rotating assembly would have been left over. And we checked that, and there's no reason to really replace that unless there's something wrong with it, which is not. So uh, here we go. We're about to get started with this build. This is the part that sucks. All right, so we got a stuck cam. Needs a little bit of lube to get moving. 
We're gonna pray and move. Alright. Oh, there it goes. There we go. One more. Huh? Said it would suck doing that in the engine bay. Honestly, it's not as bad. Uh-huh. And inside the motor, it all depends on the car. In the cars, out of cars. It all depends on the car. Boom. All right, we got the bump stick out of there. Stock grind. Coolness. All right, so we got the new cam that's getting ready to go in. Nothing crazy, just something for a little bit of sound. It's crazy. Don't let them tell you to lie. It's crazy. <laughs> And that's the cam lube. So uh, I know I didn't show you guys the last time I did a cam. Uh, I actually almost put axle grease on my cam last time. That's the last thing you want to use on the cam. You want to get yourself some, some nice cam lube. If you don't have that around, uh, motor oil might do it. But you want to stick with the stuff. The, engine assembly lube. Yeah, engine assembly lube. And that allows the cam to go in without tearing up your cam bearings. You got to work it in there nice and slow. Don't force it. And don't pull it out with a sliding hammer. Yeah, don't use a slide hammer like I was talking about earlier. <laughs> okay. Almost there. Was that a cam alignment tool that you got? Uh, cam pulley. Cam puller. I don't even know what we used on mine. I think we just did it by hand. All right, so we got the cam in. We got the timing set up, uh, chain and gear. That's all on there. Oil pump is on there. And... Uh, we're about to throw the timing cover back on temporarily because I'm going to actually replace that. And that's going to be about it for today because we um, still need to get the heads back from the shop and the oil pan and some other miscellaneous items. All right, so for those of you all who are still watching the, uh, the video, I do appreciate you because I know a lot of folks said that they were going to unsubscribe from the channel. Uh, you know, honestly, it's been good to have you guys. But, um, you know, you're going to miss out because the Drift Fox is going to keep being built. You're going to keep seeing some cool stuff on this channel, uh, regardless of what motor's in the car. Honestly, that's not what matters at the end of the day. Uh, brand loyalty, out the window. Because when you're a car guy, man, cool stuff is all that matters. That's what matters to me. Um, the reason I do these videos, folks, is to take you guys along on the process of building an awesome car. I'm building the car for me. I'm doing these videos for you guys because you got to understand uh, when I'm making these videos in here it takes me twice as long to do these installs when I'm videoing and explaining everything that's going on and then on top of that there's the editing time that goes into it after the fact when I could be doing other things um, and honestly like I said I do this for you guys uh, I'm not getting paid for this stuff uh, I don't receive any benefits I like interacting with you guys I like the tips that you guys give me and I like being able to share information with you so that you don't have to learn things the hard way like, like I did. Um, so for those of you all who are going to stick it out and stick with the channel, thumbs up to you. Give me a thumbs up on this video as well. If not, you know, so long folks. Um, one last tidbit. Uh, if you guys can tell me uh, what the configuration of this motor is as far as uh, the block, the bottom end, and the heads, if you can figure it out, because uh, you can't guess it, but if you're sharp, everything was actually in the video you just saw. So if you can tell me what LS this motor actually is, how I've got this thing set up, I will send you a size medium Drift Fox shirt. Sorry, I only have it in medium. But um, also, there's more information on these shirts coming soon, uh, as soon as they make the next batch of them. So I'll tell you how you can get one yourself. But if you can tell me what the setup is on this motor, um, of course, like I said, I don't expect you to tell me the cam. Uh, if you can tell me the bottom end, what block, what heads and everything that's going on this motor, I'll send you a shirt. So uh, that's pretty much it folks. Thanks for watching the video. Catch you guys next time.